Welcome, friends, to Inside Voice. We're going to talk today with my friend Gigi Calcano about human trafficking. She actually was a victim of human trafficking. And Gigi, it is an honor to have you here today to tell your story. Thank you so much for having me, Brenda. Well, I am so happy to share the, the, the stories of real lives, real people, and uh, that reflect the glory of a real God that does deliver us. And he reaches into the pit where we would think he would never be found. But uh, your story is one that's inspiring. And uh, let's just go back to really the beginning because a lot of people think that uh, all human trafficking stories are involve perhaps kidnapping. Uh, it, obviously, there's the disappearance of children. Uh, and then they're taught how to become participants in the sex industry. But in your case, what happened to you? Well, after I left home when I was 18, which was a very sexually abusive situation there, mm -hmm. um, I met a man who was quite older than me. He's about 12 years older. And he owned several strip clubs. And that's where I went to work. And he had some girls there that were recruiting for him. So they set me up with a date. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he had all the cars and the houses and and the money. So he kind of was the, the Romeo mm -hmm. um, rumor. And What did that look while. like in terms of your relationship with him? Did he promise you love? What, what were his promises? He promised me a forever life. He wanted mm. to marry me. Mm. He loved me. He wanted a family. Wow. Um, two weeks after I moved in with him, he bought me a brand new Cadillac. So mm. it was, you know, it was it was like it was becoming real. Yeah, I can imagine it would feel like the fairy tale, uh, and you've found a real catch, and uh, you're really kind of escaping perhaps the nightmare of your your childhood, your past. Were you uh, abused by um, someone in the family growing up in your, in, your, in your home? Yes, I was adopted as an infant. Oh. And uh, both of my adoptive parents were abusive in that way. Oh my goodness. That is a tragic story. Um, you know, we, we want to encourage people to adopt children, but how sad to be adopted into a home where both parents are abusing you. So was this something that took place uh, from what age? Started when I was six. Hmm. And continued for how long? He stopped when I was 12. Hmm. When I started, you know, becoming womanly, um, he didn't have anything to do with me. Wow. And then... I had a younger adopted sibling that they moved on to him. Oh my goodness, that's tragic. And so what did that do then to your self-worth, uh, your sense of value? What did that tell you? What was the message there? The message was that I was, I was worthless. Um, I think that's the biggest word out of all of them. You know, I was called names, all the mental abuse went along with it, but the feeling of I was already abandoned by my real parents. Right. And I was worthless and, you know, this is all I was good for. That's mm -hmm. how I felt. Mm -hmm. So you were really struggling, I would imagine, with um, not just self-worth, but understanding who you are, correct? Yes, absolutely. So then we jump forward and you're 18 and you're out in the world. You meet this man who promises you uh, a happy life, a happy home, success, and uh, all the things that a girl would want, and a family. But instead, what happened? After about eight months or so of him whining me and dining me, he started asking me to bring friends home from the club. Afterwards, you know, like about midnight or two in the morning for a drink or to visit. And then that turned into other things uh, where I would see the exchange of money and drugs. Mm -hmm. And he said I would have to do things with these people because that's what made him happy. What capacity were you working in the club at that point? <clears throat> I'm sorry? 
what capacity were you actually working in the club at that? Were you working in the club? Were you yes. uh, s like serving drinks or were you dancing? What was the capacity of your work there? Serving drinks, dancing. It was a lingerie okay. club. Okay. So <clears throat> serving drinks, dancing. So he was what? taking you to the next level by asking you to bring these friends, certain clients home and yes. then the party would continue on at home. So basically, he was prostituting you, correct? Yes. Yes. And, and then he became your pimp? He did. I, I didn't really understand what that, all this trafficking and all that was back then, because this was, you know, in the 90s. Mm -hmm. But then it became strangers, people I didn't know. Mm -hmm. Um. What did that lifestyle look like for you on a, on the daily basis, and how long did it last? I was there for five years. Mm. Uh, on a daily basis, my main goal when I woke up in the morning was to get as much drugs into my body as I possibly could. Yeah. And mm. and he would supply them. So the more mm. I could get, the better to kind of numb myself from what I had to do. Yeah, yeah. So basically, your the message to you uh, in life from everyone that you knew was that you were only good for one thing. Is that correct? Yes. yes. And where do you feel God was in the middle of all this? Did you ever pray? Did you ever think about God? Or, or did you ever think about the possibility of another life? No. I had... I had no hope and I was determined that I was going to self-medicate mm -hmm. until the end. That was, I guess that was my long-term goal. What was your wake-up call? Years down the road, I went to a rehab. It was a Christian rehab and they gave me a recovery Bible and mm -hmm. I started reading it. And I literally got on my knees one night and prayed for Jesus to take a headache away that I had. Oh. And before I finished the prayer, it was gone. Wow. And after that, I just said, you know, show me that you're real. And he did. Yeah. It's, you know, it's, uh, we're called to be like, to have the faith of a child, to be childlike in our faith. That's the scriptures talk about that. And I think that's really precious because in many ways, uh, victims of abuse, um, they're not able to continue to mature uh, mentally, psychologically, emotionally. We continue to mature physically uh, into the form of an adult, but we stay emotionally where our pain took place. Uh, yes. and, and then we don't grow from that point forward until we're able to go back into and have a safe place where we can actually examine that pain and then be able to heal it in the presence of the Lord with the work of the Holy, the inner work of the Holy Spirit. And that takes time. So uh, what I love about that is that in this childlike way, you took the word of God and you began to believe what you were hearing and what you were reading and then you began to have faith to ask with childlike faith. And the beauty of how God answered that prayer and healed the headache, what did that do for you, Gigi, in that moment? What did that tell you about your worth to God? I just felt, I felt very treasured. I, I yeah. felt like a treasure to him. And I'd never mm -hmm. felt that way before. Yeah. So where did that take you? Where did that lead you in terms of, your, uh, your, your, the Christian journey, the, the journey of maturing and learning about Christ, where did this lead you to? Were you still trapped in the same marriage? What, tell us about the journey. Well, when I was in that rehab, I had already left that situation with my, my Romeo trafficker. Mm -hmm. And after I got out, I went back to school because I wanted to be a preschool teacher. Mm. and I was working two jobs and I had a friend who I was helping because her mother just passed away 
and she brought home some alcohol one day mm. and I relapsed mm -hmm. and I relapsed bad mm -hmm. and I lost everything mm. and I found myself in the same situation yet again <clears throat> with another trafficker. Do you think that was because you felt like you're never going to be good enough and uh, it was just your way of survival? I, I think so, because I feel like that was ingrained in me from childhood. Mm -hmm. I felt like that was the way I knew. Maybe it was, for lack of a better word, comfortable. Right. Because yeah, the familiar. What I knew. Right. Yeah. We, we return to the, what's familiar to us because it's what we know. Um, the scriptures talk, talk about how a dog returns to its vomit, and I think that would be very applicable to so many of us when we return to the thing that had us bound and imprisoned. But where did you find hope um, to really decide that you were worth it to fight for yourself? That, that's the best part is um, whatever I read in that word in the beginning stayed mm -hmm. in me. Mm -hmm. It was in there and I knew I've got to get out of this situation again. Mm -hmm. And after 10 years with that trafficker, uh, they went to jail and I found a man in a parking lot who I asked for some bus fare. Wow. And he gave me his last $12 and a business card for his church. And I called that pastor mm -hmm. and he came and met me and arranged for me to come to church on Sunday. Oh my goodness. And after that, um, they just loved on me and oh. they said, we're going to take you to lunch. You are precious. Can we pray for you? I mean, I still well up when I think of that. Yeah. You know, that was six years ago. Wow, that is incredible. Uh, it really points to the incredible ministry that the church has and has been called to, to those who's, who are living a life of oppression and uh, you know just bound up. And listen, uh, we're gonna come back in a minute and I wanna get into the story of how God changed your life through that community, okay? So, yes. so friends, don't go away. Gigi's got a lot more to share when we come back. Have you experienced life-altering disappointments on the road of good intentions? Has the pressure to keep a successful image caused you to feel isolated, overwhelmed, and not good enough? Listening to such lies will eventually cause you to become frustrated, lonely, and unfulfilled. There is another voice calling you toward authentic joy and freedom. Discover this truth and arm yourself to effectively win the war on your identity. Brenda Crouch's book, Fight Forward, Reclaim the Real You, is a beautiful depiction of how she overcame sexual abuse, domestic violence, and a victim identity to embracing a life that is thriving. You too can fight the lies and heal the wounds intended to hijack your soul and reach your God-given potential. Here's what people are saying. If you have ever vowed that you will never be hurt again, then this book is for you. It was God's perfect timing for me to read this book. Brenda's advice gave me the freedom to let go and let God mend my heart. It's exactly what I needed. This book is like healing oil to my deepest hurts. I praise God for Brenda's courage to tell her story and help women like me. God created you to win, and it's never too late to change the trajectory of your life. Order a copy for yourself or a friend today and begin your journey of discovery. Available at brendacrouch.com, Amazon, Barnes & Noble, ChristianBooks.com. Paul and Brenda Crouch here, baby. We have great plans coming yeah, we up. We do. We're here in Anaheim at our beautiful studio that God has provided, but what do we have coming up? We've got amazing content coming up that we're actually very excited about. We just finished season four, and we have plans to do some broadcasting from around the world, mm -hmm. uh, different locations, and God's opening doors for us. Amen. But they say you have not mm -hmm. because you ask not. Mm -hmm. And in four years, we have never asked for a donation or any yeah. kind of support, and now we are. 
It's our heart to see that media is done right and that we give God glory for everything. And we just are following the call and we're doing it honest. And uh, we hope that you will catch the vision and ride this wave with us and know Amen. that it, God is going to continue to pour more and more out as we follow in obedience to him. Amen. Go to Brenda's website. There's all kinds of resources there for giving. God bless you. BrendaCrouch.com. Welcome back. We're talking with Gigi Calgano about her story of coming free from human trafficking. And Gigi, as we uh, closed out the last section, um, you mentioned how that this pastor from a church reached out to you and they really became a community that surrounded you and encouraged you, poured into you. Tell me about that and how important that was to, uh, to springboarding and maturing as a believer in Christ and your healing, really, your healing process. It was critical mm -hmm. because I had reflected on the scripture in Hosea about to her who is unloved, I will call beloved. Yeah. And I wanted that so bad. Mm. And this church really poured into me. And even when one night I had a knock at my door, mm -hmm. I was still staying in a motel. And it was my trafficker coming back out of jail. Ooh. And that church, they supported me. They showed up where I was working and I ran out the back door and jumped into their car mm -hmm. and they drove off and rescued me. Wow. It was just incredible what God put through these people. Wow. Yeah, God does provide uh, <laughs> our safety. He preserves us when we're in danger. Uh, I can attest to that with my own story, uh, how God was there so many times protect me in some very abusive situations. So were you, um, were you often in, in danger of being stalked by, uh, by these guys? Uh, were they looking for you? They probably weren't very happy with the fact that you had changed your lifestyle. I'm guessing. No, no, they're not. And I, I did get an order of protection. Wow. And, and my church prayed protection over me. Correct. And they put me through trauma therapy. Mm -hmm. And I got involved in small group and mm. they gave me a safe place to live. Mm. Um, the sweet couple who's in their eighties, I actually live with them now. Oh, They're I the ones it. who organized my whole rescue. <laughs> oh my goodness, that's wonderful. Oh, that's amazing. You know what that tells me is, it's kind of like God's uh, restoration with um, you know the bad example of parenting that you once had. He's restoring that with this sweet couple that cares for you. They've provided a place for you to have a home and a family. I mean, isn't that like God? And it doesn't have to come through our, our bloodline. You know, God is just so good how he orders our steps. I love that for you, Gigi. Well, I know that you're involved in um, ministries right now that, uh, yes. tell us about the ministries right there. You're in Memphis, Tennessee. And I imagine there's a lot that goes on out on the streets. And uh, what are the ministries you're involved with right now? And how are you able to give back now to that community? I've been involved with A Way Out Ministries for about two and a half years now. And they have a residential program here in Memphis. And they were just gifted another 80 acres to build another home. And wow. uh, their, their leader goes into these strip clubs and literally prays with women. She'll take women out of the strip clubs and, and yeah. put them into the residential home. And it's all, it's all about Jesus. Mm. And so I've been invited to some of those um, gatherings, Bible studies, and I've been able to meet those women on that level mm -hmm. and, and feel what they feel with them and, yeah. and pray with them. Mm. That's amazing. You know, the, one of the things that people don't understand is oftentimes when we're wounded, these are primal wounds that take place in our childhood when we're sexually abused. Um, you know, the, the kind of things that they alter your personality, they alter your sense of self. And it, it absolutely robs you of joy. And um, there's, a, there's this kind of stoic 
behavior to self-protect, I think, that it, it is a natural part of it. But when we come to Christ, then he begins to kind of reverse all that. And there's this a little bit of an unraveling that takes place. Would you not agree? Where we yes. have to learn to, to become vulnerable again. And how do we do that? I mean, that's really hard to do when we've been so beaten down by a system that wanted to destroy us. And, and the enemy of our soul is out to kill, steal, and destroy. And I am convinced that he is targeting children especially right now. I mean, but over, over time, he has targeted children. He wants to get us young and take us out. So how in the world, Gigi, do we come to the place where we're able to trust again in that community, within that community that's loving on you? There's got to be this kind of knee jerk that says, okay, well, I'm going to trust this much, but I'm going to hold back because I'm waiting for the shoe to drop. How do you get past that? The way I got past it was this this home, when they opened their home to me, mm -hmm. um, it was about a year I finally got comfortable. And I said, you know what? This is the first stability I've ever had mm -hmm. in my life. And that's that safety and stability and feeling like family yeah. um, and the nurturing that I got and the tough love. Right there. There you go. But, yeah, she's she's a tough lover. <laughs> it, that really helped me a lot because I feel like if you baby someone, you're going to handicap them. But if you mm. are there with the tough love, you can help them heal because yeah. so many times I wanted to give up, Brenda. Mm. Wow. But I, you have to you have to go through it. You do. You really do. And you've got to have the, the enough love for yourself and love for God to trust him in the process and to say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stick with this and I'm not going to give up on me. Because giving up on me and giving up on what he's provided for me here means I have to go back to the only thing that I know, correct? Yes. yes. <laughs> I want to know. I, I have a question for you. If you could go back and talk to the 16-year-old Gigi before she left home, wounded, battered, broken, never really being loved in a healthy way, what kind of advice would you give to her today before she makes all those decisions? I would definitely tell her to stay strong, that she is chosen and precious mm -hmm. and loved and that she is worthy and she is a daughter of the king, mm. the king of all kings. And that nothing in this world matters because Jesus is greater than all of it. Yeah, amen. You know, it's so important that we understand that and just know that he came to us in the form of, God came to us in the form of man so that everything that has kept us down, marginalized, broken, hindered, could be broken. And it was a finished work on the cross. It was love that took him to the cross. You know, interestingly, Jesus, he, he's the second, uh, second person of, of the Trinity. The, it's the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit together. And this, the King of Kings came low to serve us to pour himself out, all that he has, all of his goodness upon humanity, upon a broken humanity, so that he could heal us, so that we could have what he has, and to redeem us from this broken world. We are all born into this broken world, and there is not one human being, not even these traffickers, that was not created in the image of God. God loves them, and he loves everyone watching this program today. He loves you, Gigi, and he's, he's proven that love. Even when you didn't know, have a clue who he was, he was running after you. He is our rescuer and our redeemer. Tell us about some of the girls that you're able to now minister those things to now when, when they come in off of the street. I know that you get to speak to them. You probably pray with them. Can you tell us a story about that? Yes, I, I met a, a young lady and 
She had six months of sobriety at one of the Bible studies there, and I celebrated with her, and she wanted to hear, well, how did you do it? And I was able to share my faith with her, Good. and she's getting more and more grounded in Jesus. Yeah. And then the next thing I know, a couple of weeks later, she gets baptized. And so just to know that you can, you can get these girls while they're vulnerable and encourage yeah. them with the love of Jesus, <laughs> that they are precious and loved and that God has so much better for them. So oh, much amen. more. Amen. And you're such a, a beautiful example of the faithfulness of God. Do they ever look to you like Mama Gigi? Yes. <laughs> Do they ever call you that? <laughs> some, some of them call me Auntie Gigi. <laughs> oh, I love it. Auntie Gigi. You're too young to be a mama, right? <laughs> oh, that's so sweet and so precious. Well, how can people find you, uh, Gigi, if they want to have you come and minister to their groups or, or wherever? Is, are you available to uh, speaking into the lives of some of these women that are coming in off the streets? Absolutely. Yes, absolutely. How can we they find, can find you? me on Instagram. Okay. Gigi.calcano. Awesome. Well, we'll make sure that they have that and they can see it. And uh, uh, tell us the name of the ministries again that you're working with. A Way Out Ministries uh -huh. is a residential program. And I'm the prayer warrior for She Loves Out Loud, which is gathering women to pray. Wow. That's awesome. How many times a week do you meet? Uh, we meet on Tuesdays for She Loves Out Loud, mm -hmm. and we meet on Wednesdays for A Way Out Ministries. So okay. once a week. Yeah. And do you ever take these women to, um, I mean, is there any kind of rehabilitation into teaching them how to live life practically on their own without having to go back into uh, the, the sex industry? Yes, they have them doing um, some knitting and crocheting and, you know, teaching them little skills. And yeah. then they will go to picnics and farms. They do equine therapy. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I work with a treatment center out in Montana and equine therapy is huge. It's just such a wonderful way to uh, put someone in touch with. And horses are very sensitive to the brokenness. Mm -hmm. um, it's like God puts something in their nature to just be able to almost minister. Uh, there's a healing gift and a, a presence in working with horses. So I love that you're able to do something like this. I just wanna thank you for making yourself available to be able to talk about a very sensitive subject. I appreciate you being with us today. Thank you so much, Brenda. Well, I, will, I bless you, I'll be praying for you and that God will open doors for your ministry to continue to bring light and hope to those who really have no hope. And, and to you, our viewers, we thank you so much for tuning in and for being a part of this conversation. I hope that you'll share it with your friends and I hope that you too will understand that you were made in the image of God. He loves you. And those that you see who are hurting, if you see a, a trafficking victim or you think maybe there is um, a, a victim in your presence, I hope that you'll call this hotline. We're going to put it on the screen for you and you'll make a report because people need out. We love you. God loves you. Come again next time.